Hey guys, it's the 26th of June. Uh, welcome to this video in which I'm going to go over the blood red moon which is happening on the 27th of July next month. I just want to say a special thanks to Desmond Lamb who sent me on my way to uh, research more information about this day which is happening. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go over what I found um, as being given that seed of information and uh, I've just found loads of stuff uh, about uh, this day. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm really excited. Woohoo! So, okay, on the 27th of July, we have this super red blood moon which is happening. Uh, but not just that, we also have uh, Mars which is going to be directly beneath it. So we're going to have a huge blood red moon, and just beneath the blood red moon, we're going to have a, a glowing red Mars. And I'm not sure if you saw the other video, but uh, what's happening on Mars is there is a dust storm that is now so intense, it is encircling the entire planet. So Mars is becoming more and more visible in the sky, and it's like a, it's going to be like a glowing orb when uh, this, uh, this blood red moon happens. So here we can see uh, Mars dust storm is so intense, it's now circling the entire planet. So not only is Mars going to be the closest to Earth that it has been this century, but it's also got this dust storm which is happening. So all these things are, are, are coming together and looking really, really interesting. So it says that NASA's 15-year-old Opportunity rover has a rough couple of weeks on Mars. Back in May 30th, a pretty big dust storm was spotted on the Martian surface and Opportunity was right in its path. Since then, it's only gotten bigger. On June 12th, it has reached 35 million square kilometers, 14 million square miles, basically covering a quarter of the planet. And earlier this week, NASA has confirmed that the storm is now a planet encircling global dust event and showing no signs of backing off soon. This, this is incredible, okay? So we have Mars, which is going to be the closest to Earth that it's been this century. And we have Mars, which has a huge dust storm making it glow even brighter and we also have the blood red moon which is happening on the 27th of July but not only that the 27th of July is the 15th of of and this is uh, this is where I wanted to say thanks to um, to Desmond Lamb because he showed me this uh, this date the 15th of of and how important it is to the Jews so I'm going to go over that but first of all what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you where the eclipse is uh, happening, the lunar eclipse. So I have my uh, my location set to Israel here. You can see this is my location, uh, that little green dot over there. And uh, the lunar eclipse is happening directly over Israel and uh, also uh, Europe. Uh, on the 27th of July, you will see that this is what from a, a celestial perspective it looks like uh, we see there's the uh, there's the blood red moon and right there beneath it is is Mars so what I'm going to do is change my view to a, a terrestrial perspective so we're going to be in Israel looking up so I'm going to go forwards by hour it's now 7 30 p.m. and the moon is starting to come over the horizon and there you can see Mars is joining it just beneath the moon and as we come now 9 p.m., we start going into the penumbria, which is the which causes the blood red moon. So this is the Earth's shadow uh, being projected onto the moon, which causes it to have a red glow. And the sun is because the sun is directly behind us. Okay, so here we go to 11 p.m. And as you can see, we have an incredible sight here to behold a blood red moon with a very very shiny Mars closest to the earth that it's ever been in the 21st century happening right over Israel so here we are at 11 p.m. going forwards and right on midnight the blood moon starts to end I mean that's just incredible guys this is this is in Israel at midnight bang 
<laughs> Woohoo! This is incredible. Okay, so here we see Mars. Okay, but not only that, the f this is happening on the 15th of Av. So regarding the Jewish tradition on the 15th of Av, the, if you look on Shabbat, it, it talks about the 15th of Av, it, it talks about uh, this being the happiest day and the greatest day for marriage in, uh, in Israel amongst the Jews. And uh, it, it references the, uh, the Talmud in that article. And I, I've read um, a lot of the Talmud. I know that a lot of people are very uh, skeptical about it and they want to uh, put their heads in the sand. But you, you'll find that most of those people have never read it and they don't know anything about it. So I can tell you from experience, uh, having read uh, a lot of the Talmud, that um, there are some things in there which are uh, offensive towards Christians and towards Jesus Christ. Uh, but you can't blame the uh, the Jewish people who wrote those things uh, because in uh, the the first to the third century uh, there were some pretty nasty things which which were being done well both to the Christians and uh, to the Jews. So there's stuff in there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff which isn't great. But let's not nitpick those things. Uh, look for the the, uh, the the diamonds and the gems. Uh, which which are in here there is Jewish wisdom in here and there is knowledge regarding Jewish practices and Jewish history and all those kinds of things so uh, the Talmud is not something where we need it not, it's not something that we need to be afraid of we have the Holy Spirit in us which witnesses the truth in all things if there's anything that conflicts with the Word of God as it is uh, um, um, as it is interpreted uh, to us by the Holy Spirit then we reject that outright so you'll see that as, a, as an example of what I'm about to give you here, this, this would not be known in any other fashion apart from through the Talmud. So here it says um, that according to our sages in uh, Tanit 30, God had not spoken individually with Moses since the time the spies had died and the generation of the adults who had been redeemed from Egypt had been condemned to die in the desert. This proved that Moses' elevated position was entirely due to the people he represented. When these people were in disgrace, Moses was made to feel this. The condition remained static for 38 years until the 15th of Av of the 40th year. So when uh, when uh, the the spies went to, to view the land of Canaan and they came back and they said that, um, uh, that the, 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 there were giants there and they looked as grasshoppers and they were fearful, God uh, sent them into the wilderness uh, for 40 years or 38 years because of their uh, due to their unbelief. So the 15th of Av was the first time that God spoke to Moses again. So there was this, this silence for a very, very long time. And then on the 15th of Av, God spoke to Moses. So it says that this day became a day of great rejoicing as the fact that God commenced his dialogue with Moses indicated that the people were once again in a state of grace. It was also a special day for Moses personally as it signaled the return of his prophetic powers. The reason that the prophetic powers did not already return to Moses on the 10th of Av, precisely after the anniversary of the debacle with the, sky, with the spies, so obviously uh, the, the, what happened with the spies happened on the 10th of Av, was because at the time in the second year when the decree against the people had been promulgated, Moses observed seven days mourning for the decree, a period when he would not have been the recipient of prophetic signs, seeing that the state of joy is required for a person to possess such powers. Now, on the 15th of the month of Av, both Moses and the people could rejoice simultaneously. So God uh, spoke to Moses again after the, 40, after the 38 years of silence in, in the wilderness. God spoke to Moses again. So you remember they followed they followed the, um, the 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 uh, the the cloud of smoke and the the light, but there was never any dialogue with Moses until the fifteenth of Av, thirty eight years later. So it also says in ten and thirty b. However, what is the special joy of the fifteenth of Av? And Rabbi Yehuda said, this was the day on which the members of different tribes were permitted to enter one another's tribes by intermarriage. 
It was initially prohibited to intermarry between tribes so as to keep each plot of land within the portion of the tribe that originally inherited it. This halakha, and that means to, uh, to keep them separate, was instituted by the Torah in the wake of the complaint by the relatives of the daughters of Zelophehad, who were worried that if these women married men from other tribes, the inheritance of Zelophehad would be lost from his tribe. So this, this 15th of Av is about intermarriage between different tribes. It also says, what did they expound? In support of their conclusion that this halakha was no longer in effect, the verse states, this is the matter that the Lord has commanded concerning the daughters of Zelophehad. Let them marry whom they think best. Only into the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. They derived the verse that this matter shall be practiced only in this generation when Eretz Israel was divided among the tribes, but afterwards members of different tribes were permitted to marry. On this day, on the day this barrier separating the tribes was removed, the, the saves established a permanent day of rejoicing. So it's all about intermarriage. The 15th of Av is about intermarriage. This very day that's happening on the blood moon when Mars is there. This is incredible, guys. It also says, uh, it goes on to say, The 15th of Av was the day on which the deaths of the Jews in the wilderness ceased. The entire generation that had left Egypt had passed away. The ones who were in unbelief because they, they didn't believe that God could, uh, could overcome uh, the, the Canaanites. As the master said, after the sins of the spies on account of the Jews of that generation, they were sentenced to die in the wilderness. So there was this prolonged period of silence, exactly what's happened in the last 2000 years, right? As long as the death of the Jews in the wilderness had not ceased, God's speech did not come to Moses, as it is said. And it came to pass when all of the men of war were consumed and the dead from among the people that the Lord spoke to me. So when they all had died, the Lord then spoke again to Moses. And that's Deuteronomy 2:16 to 17. This indicates that only after the last member of that generation had died was God's speech delivered to me. That is Moses, but not beforehand. When the Jews realized that the decree that God would not speak to Moses had been lifted, they established a permanent day of rejoicing. This was the day that God started to speak to Moses again. But it gets even better than that. On the 15th of Av, the Mishnah teaches that the daughters of Jerusalem would go out in white clothes, and on the 15th of Av, they would go out into the vineyards and dance. The sages taught this, this tradition in greater detail. The daughter of the king borrows white garments from the daughter of the high priest. The daughter of the high priest borrows from the daughter of the deputy high priest. The daughter of the deputy high priest borrows from the daughter of the priest anointed for war. They're all borrowing white garments from each other. What does it say in the book of Revelation about white garments? He's going to give us white garments. Well, that happened on the 15th of Av. This was a celebration that took place. They, they, they used to give each other white garments. Guys, like this is, this is absolutely incredible. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the 27th of July, uh, the blood red moon. And, uh, 